Hi everybody, my name is Justin Stoney and I'm the founder of New York Vocal Coaching here in New York City. Welcome to episode 82 of Voice Lessons to the World, the show where we want to help you as singers by answering your questions from all over and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later, but our question for this week comes from Salman S. in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Now, Salman wrote this question to us actually today and it was so good that we just had to answer it right away. Salman writes, Dear Justin, I'm a new singer and I'm starting to be able to belt high but it feels like a strain and even a pain when I sing. What should I do? Now, Salman, it's just so great that you ask this because so many singers struggle with vocal strain. Luckily, we can fix this, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, is what is vocal strain and how do we fix it? So let's first talk about why we don't want vocal strain. It seems obvious why we wouldn't want vocal strain, but let's make sure that we know. First, it affects tone quality negatively. A good rule of thumb is that if it feels free, it probably sounds good. Next is stamina. We're just not gonna last very long in practice, in the recording studio, in a live performance, if we've got a lot of vocal strain. And then finally, vocal health. You know, honestly, it's pretty rare to hurt your voice all in one shot. It's possible you could yell and scream at a football game or a party, or you could have a really bad sickness and get hurt fast, but usually vocal damage occurs over the long term. And if you have repetitive stress from vocal strain, that can really be one of the reasons. Now, it's not to panic. We're gonna fix it together by looking at what factors cause vocal strain, and what it really means to strain. So next, let's look at it. What factors cause vocal strain? We can break these factors down into the S-T-R-A-I-N of strain. Setting, where are you singing? Is it a place with poor acoustics or maybe a lot of noise going on? Are you pushing over that noise? Are you with a band and there's other instruments? You're pushing your voice over those instruments or maybe the amplification is improper for what you're trying to do. Make sure that your environment isn't the source of your strain. Now how about time duration? It's not wrong sometimes to sing for two, three, four, maybe even five hours, but not every day. You have to know, what vocal marathon am I running? Also, is your speaking voice a part of that? If you're talking a lot and singing a lot, you might just be doing too long of vocal usage. Now, how about the range? Are you singing too high, too low? Obviously, it's not wrong to stretch your voice and work on territories you haven't mastered, but you gotta be in a comfortable tessitura. That's the spot of the voice where your songs live. If you're singing in a tessitura all the time that's uncomfortable, it's gonna cause strain. What about the amount of training? I know you guys are working hard with your voice teachers at home or you're doing our videos or our vocal course and you're working to get to those more advanced levels, but you gotta be honest with yourself and not move too fast. Work at the level that you're at so that you don't cause strain trying to do things that are too hard for you, at least right now. How about the intensity? Don't be falling in love with a big old sound, right? If you're pushing volume, pushing force, always going for the strong sounds, never building the flexibility, the resonance, the breath support that you need, the intensity could be causing the strain. And then, finally, your own natural abilities. Everybody's got a different athleticism and a different history. If you've had injuries in the past, you might be compensating more, and some people it just takes a little bit longer. So be honest with yourself as far as your own vocal athleticism. We're gonna keep working to take you to the next level no matter where you're starting off. So now, what does it even mean, though, to strain? One complaint that you hear too often from singers is that their vocal training is not specific. The teacher will say, oh, you're straining, but not give specific ways to fix that strain. So, Salman, let's get specific. Here's seven areas of strain that we want to address. First, the neck. The area that we see and probably feel the most tension is the neck. The sternocleidomastoids are these long head-turning muscles here. They can get rather tight. The stylohyoids right up here can also put some strain on the larynx. What about the back of the neck? The 
capitis, the occipitals, and the trapezius muscles, all of these can get tight. How do we fix it? We become aware of it, and then we aren't afraid of holding it down or massaging it while we sing. That's one of the best ways to free up a muscle, is to hold it or massage it. Get those muscles out of your vocal equation so that all the right ones, the intrinsic muscles, can do their work. Next, what about breathing? We don't think of breathing as something that could be a strain, but it can be. If we're taking too much air or using too much air, or if muscles are misbehaving in our breathing system, the biggest offender is the solar plexus, the upper abdominals. We don't want these guys to get tight when we sing. It's a muscle pair with the larynx, and it can cause a lot of strain. You can watch our episode, The Shiny Solar Plexus, for a full treatment of that. Now, what about the larynx? The larynx is a major concern for us as far as vocal strain because the vocal folds are housed inside the larynx. What we're trying to avoid is the larynx becoming a pitch changer. We want the vocal folds to do that. What do I mean by this? Well, we want to avoid this kind of thing. You can see my larynx moving with the pitches, rising as they go up and falling as they go down. We want to avoid this. Now, it's okay for the larynx to be a style changer. If I have a neutral larynx, whoa, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. It's a cool sound, but what if I'm looking for a little sweeter, poppier sound? Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. It's okay to raise it up depending on the style or lower it down depending on the style, but we don't want it changing those pitches for us too much. Next, what about alignment? It's easy to forget that our entire bodies need to be involved when we sing, so our alignment plays a great part in this. A lot of people hold tension in their low back. Make sure you're not crunched back here. Also, make sure you're not slumping in the sternum. But really, you want to check in with your whole body when you sing neck that's free to move, shoulders, spine, hips, knees, and feet. You might consider doing some stretching or even yoga as a part of your vocal workout to make sure that you're in touch with your physical body and how that corresponds to your sound. Now, what about the vocal folds themselves? Now, we also forget about these amazing vocal fold muscles and how they have their own independent strain control. Check it out. May, 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 may. Now, that's a clean sound, but what if this is happening? May, 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 may. And I'm getting too much squeeze, I can always go may, 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 or may, 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 to fix it. I have control over too much, just right, or even compensating the other way with some looseness. Control over that musculature. Now, next, super important, the jaw and tongue. Let me tell you something about the jaw and the tongue. They're located above the larynx. Now, why does that matter? Well, any muscle, think about it, pulls one thing towards another thing. So, all of these muscles, geniohyoids, mylohyoids, digastrics, hyoglossus, styloglossus, the list goes on, tons of muscles above the larynx to hike it up. What does this mean? We need to release the jaw and not have it holding or thrusting and the tongue not retracting or tightening. Back to our hmm, NG position whenever we possibly can. And finally, what about the soul? Now, Salman, we're really saving the best for last here because we could talk all day about vocal strain and still forget what's really important, which is the singer's soul. We don't want to put a strain on that. Why can't I get this right? Why can't I get these high notes? Why is this person better than me? Why is this taking so long? Why is Justin using all these strange words like sternocleidomastoid? Whoa. Hey. Let's remember, step one, it is well with my soul. I love to sing. This is fun. I'm going to be with this for my life. This is my craft. This is what I do. I have a gift. I'm going to give this gift away. If we go back to those messages, I promise you all the technique becomes so much easier and you're going to watch the strain in all those areas that I mentioned drop like flies. So Salmon and all, I hope that's been helpful for you guys today as singers. If you have questions that you'd like to see us answer on the show, you can send an email to questions at voicelessons to the world. 
www.thepeopleshow.com. So I just encourage you, don't lose that joy. Don't lose that passion. Don't let people tell you you can't sing. You and I both know false. Get with a great voice teacher in your area, or if you're in New York, or you wanna Skype with one of our staff, you can visit us at www.newyorkvocalcoaching.com. I also encourage you to download our vocal course. This is a 12-part course that takes you on a singing journey from beginner to master, hundreds of vocal exercises that you can do in the comfort of your own home or even car. Check this out at www.voicelessonstotheworld.com. Last, if you're looking for free daily vocal tips, you can sign up by visiting www.dailyvocaltips.com. I'm Justin Stoney. Until next time, make a joyful noise. Meow. Meow. But our question for this week comes from Daquan R. in Toronto, Canada. And Daquan writes, Dear Justin, I love your videos, but I wish you'd release a vocal course that I can do at home. Is there something like this in the works? But our question for this week comes from Bruna M. in Natal, Brazil. And Bruna writes, Dear Justin, People tell me they like the sound of my voice, but when I hear it back on recordings, I 